excuse me. Hey sis, I wanted to uh, make this video for a while. I promised you I'd make a video response to this um, and share an experience that I myself had. Now granted I was a teenager, but um, like was mentioned, you know, in your second video, it seemed to make a lot of sense what you said, you know, that sometimes maybe the younger people are more sensitive to the spiritual realm or, you know, things going on and supernatural, but um, because they don't understand it, it scares them. I went through a lot of different um, experiences and things like that myself, and I wanted to share one of them with you, and I got some scripture that uh, I'll mention in the story. Um, of my experience and also I will include a website in the description area that I found while I was looking up to remind myself exactly what I knew it was about you know interpreting a king's dream but I couldn't remember who it was that did it as it was it was Daniel and um, but I found this website that talks about interpreting dreams from a um, biblical and Christian perspective uh, that I thought you might be interested in. Um, but before I get started, I wanted to introduce our one little baby here. This is Star. You might have seen pictures of her on Facebook, but this is our little fur baby. I'll let her go play now so I can get on with it. Um, but anyways, like I said, um, my experience that related to this or that I thought of while I was listening to your video, um, I was maybe junior high, I think. I was not yet a Christian myself. Um, I didn't really come to understand what it meant to be a Christian until I was like just before my 17th birthday. And... Uh, but I still, at this time, I was, I had a, a strong desire for, uh, think the things of God, you know, going to church, um, reading the Bible and stuff, and, uh, just, well, it was at this time that the experience happened. Actually, it was actually, um, I was part of it, but it wasn't actually happening to me. It was happening to a young lady that I was hanging out with at the time, and she wasn't a Christian either. Um, I had read the story in Daniel verse 2, I mean, Daniel chapter 2, sorry, where Daniel um, interpreted the dream of the King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, if you remember, or you go back to read um, Daniel chapter 2, um, Nebuchadnezzar was not a Christian at that time, I don't believe. Um, or, you know, but, um, the reason I say that too is because Nebuchadnezzar went to, um, all these other people that, you know, weren't Christians, the different other people, to, it asking them to, um, to interpret his dreams, sorcerers and, and the like, to interpret his dreams for him. They could not do it. And so it came that Daniel did it. And Daniel explained the dream as God had shown it to him, um, what the interpretation was. And it was around about that time that I was, had read that, that my friend that I was hanging out with at the time, she started having dreams. She was really concerned about it because it was a reoccurring dream. It was very vivid to her. And as it progressed, as you know, things went on, she started um, having it more and more often, more and more vivid. Then it started happening not only when she was asleep, but during class and stuff, like, you know, while she was still awake, she'd just kind of, like, zone out, um, go into a trance or whatever you would call it. Um, I don't know how to, ex to describe it exactly, but... Um, and it just became more and more often and things like that. And it was kind of like in a symbolic type manner, 
Um, she they like flashes of light. She'd see lots of trees, you know, and various little things like that. There was really no way to interpret or really understand it. Um, and when it finally stopped was after a really tragic incident happened in our trailer park, actually. Um, this guy that we knew, he was much older than us. His um, mother had a boyfriend that was living with them, and the guy was shot. Now, granted, a lot of trees and stuff, the way that we ourselves interpreted, like I said, there was no interpreter. Neither of us were Christian. To say whether it was from God or not, I don't know. I, I you know, who knows, really, um, unless you look into the scriptures and stuff and, you know, to say. I mean, when these things happen that we can't explain, we really need to look to scripture, and that's important because, you know, some of it may not be of God. Now, how we know that it's of God is that, you know, this is the sheep will know my voice. And so, like I said, at that time we weren't Christians. We really didn't, you know, know about all that stuff except for me reading scriptures, and I was thinking about the story of Daniel and things like that, so, um, the flashes of light, we guessed or figured would probably be, you know, like on TV and stuff where flashes of light usually are indicating the gunfire, um, and things like that, so, and then it stopped, so, that was the experience that I had, and, um, I also wanted to comment, though, I wouldn't read a whole lot into it when it comes to children either because um, it, even doctors will tell you that at a certain age, usually they um, start developing a fear of the dark and just, you know, different things like that. I think it has a lot to what um, the children are exposed to their imaginations are, you know, they have very active imaginations that do seem to dull over time as we get older, you know, and granted some of us have, obviously still have imagination or we wouldn't be able to create movies and write books and things like that, but it's different. Um, kids are still exploring their world and learning to understand their world and things like that. Even at four, almost five years old, my daughter asked me questions. Like, you know, she's still trying to understand things around her and things like that, too. So, and I, when she does have night terrors or anything like that, I call them night terrors. That's what the doctors call them. <laughs> when they had nightmares and things like that, you know, I always tell her, you know, look, um, you know, just remember the song from the Veggie Tales. You know, God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman, and he's looking out for you and me. Anyway, I've started getting braver about singing lately, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just... You know, look at the website that I put in the description. I think that will help a lot for you and your your friend that's dealing with this. Um, and talk her, tell her to talk to the pediatrician. He'll tell her the same as I was told. You know, certain ages and stuff, they do develop um, fear of things. Maybe they were exposed to something, you know, um, like somebody, you know, that their babysitter or somebody watching um, or reading them a story that wasn't biblical and it might have scared them. I really don't know, but when it comes to things like that that we can't understand, the thing to look to is God and the Holy Spirit and, of course, the scriptures. So, um, I hope that you got enough answers from everybody that you can put this all in perspective in the right perspective. So, God bless you, girl. I hope you're having a great day.